Hello and welcome to New Junction. So today as we continue the progress on the pilot sidings, the first things first is I'm going to address the rear of the scene, mainly this section and obviously behind the fence. Now the first stage that I need to address is going to be the ground cover. So like we've already done the ground cover on the sidings, um, which is now dried, I'm just going to add a small layer I'm actually going to use some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf, and this is the Earth uh, variety. And that's literally going to be placed under some PVA, and that's the first stage of this process. And then we'll get on with something more interesting. So, I'm not going to bore you too much, I'm going to do this to a montage, and you'll see me after. Before I get on just quickly, I want to remind you all, obviously I'm using the Metcalf card kits, and I'm about to put some gluey water down. Um, it's just a brief reminder to make sure you do it yourself and to remind you that I've also previously done it is to cover all the bases of the kits with some matte varnish just brush it on lightly and that seals it in and then stops it being vulnerable to the water you're about to apply with the glue for the rest of the scenery and it should add a bit of protection to the uh, the base of the model in general uh, ongoing as well but, uh, it's just a, just a reminder for you right so I'm now going to turn the power off and we'll get on with some uh, some gluing. And as you can see, just like that, there's a lot of uh, ground cover. This is just the first stage of this. If I pan you over just to see, show you behind the fence as well. See the whole lot has been done. I learned how to control this gimbal. I'm just going to let this dry a little. And then I'm going to bring the hoover up. And see all these mounds and things. I've had to put a lot more in the arches just so it gets to the corners. Um, I'm going to hoover that up and it should leave a flat layer. I'm then going to go uh, across the fronts of the, the walls here and then in the arches and add some ballast um, just to sort of break it up. So I want to try and make, give the impression of a track next to the fence that a van would come down to then go to some uh, containers in this section, some sort of office containers to simulate some form of storage. So while this dries, we're going to have to have something else to do. So I'm going to uh, show you now a few scenic items which I'm going to prepare, ready for when this is dry. So with that triangular area, I wanted something to put in it to sort of lend itself to the scene of the pilot sidings. So as you can see, I've been doing my uh, digging and on uh, model L scenery, scale model scenery, I found this porter cabin now, it is a card kit, but I thought this would probably lend itself quite well to the scene um, and then surround that with uh, certain shrubbery and some accessories, etc. And that should look quite good and it sort of lends itself to the scene, as I said. Other things I've got myself, while, I've, while you're placing your order, you might as well. Um, I've got some safety railings from them. They're just, um, again, sort of a card kit, which I'll put... Uh, in and around the line side. I've got some old-fashioned speed restriction signs. Now these necessarily wouldn't be in use on my layout as it's set, but they might be uh, tucked away next to the porter cabin as a bit of side detail that's yet to be removed. I thought that would add to it. I've also got myself a walkway to come from the main platform. So this is how the, uh, the staff get there. Answering one of the uh, more common questions for this scene, how do the people get to the uh, the site in question. I've also been digging through my uh, bits boxes and I've uh, pulled out old bits of track like this. I'm going to strip the uh, sleepers off them and using 
some uh, rail match spray this is sleeper grime i'm going to spray them up and they'll be left in amongst the line side as you'd see i found myself in my local shop as well some spare wheels now these were going quite cheap because they're rather old i think they've been in my local shop for some time now same again i'm just going to paint them up with some sleeper grime and leave the odd one or two around i've also got myself a uh, Backman TMD accessories kit with some pallets and some uh, water bowsers in and some signs as well. So all being well, with all that lot, we should be able to make uh, a relatively nice scene um, from behind the fence and behind the pilot sidings. Um, well, that's the hope anyway. So first things first, strip all this back. I'm going to go and prepare the first portal cabin. So here we are with the scale model scenery uh, port cabin kit. As you can see, it's fairly self-explanatory. You cut it out, you uh, fold the tabs in to make the uh, rectangle uh, shape, and away you go. You stick on various accessories if you want some signage or different doors, got air vents, different windows, etc. Some stilts. Very easy. So the first step is to cut it all out. And luckily for me, you get two in the pack. So here's one I've already done, nice and simple. Um, and also a good top tip, obviously things like the air vents, the signage especially, um, you're only going to use one or two of these on this portal cabin, for example, if you were to customise it up. So a good top tip is always, if you get these things, never bin them, keep them. For example, I've got myself a, uh, a pot which used to house some people in it. Um, always keep these sort of plastic tubs and store all sorts of things like this, whether it be... Uh, uh, sleepers as you've seen or you will see I'm going to cut my uh, track up in a bit to get the rails keep the sleepers also stick them in pots like this because in the future they come in very handy and of course you can dot them around the rest of the layout right less waffle I'm going to put this together and then uh, hopefully get on with some painting after as well And there we have it. As you saw, that took me all of uh, 10 minutes in reality to uh, make this. Um, <laughs> due to my own uh, rushing, I did uh, mess up this uh, seam here, this fold. Easy fix though, I'll just go over that with a felt tip and colour that in and you'll never notice. Um, one reason I went for these kits is A, because they're cheap and cheerful and I didn't really know what to do with that area, so I thought I'd play with the idea of having one of these. Um, the other one is I wanted to have a go at um, adding a bit of moss. So using my glue you saw earlier, I'm just going to dab a bit down the edge here. Ooh, focus you back in. Dab a bit down the edge and then with some Woodland Scenics fine turf, the green one this time, I'm just going to sprinkle a bit on just to simulate a bit of moss growing on the uh, water cabin. Now the idea for this came about when I was going through my uh, humble washes and I just so happened to find the one I've never used, the dark green wash and it's actually solidified, it's turned to jelly inside the tub and I thought well I could add more water to it but then I had the bright idea that while it's not a liquid form I can actually use it on this sort of kit because normally liquid would obviously affect this kit um, so I thought I'd give it a go. Now this is probably going to fail miserably, but I thought I'd give it a go. And just using a cotton bud, taking some of the the dark green uh, gel that it now is, and just sort of trying to lightly dab it on, just to give the uh, a good undertone. And then of course, uh, once that's finished, we'll put a bit of PVA on 
and then add um, some of the fine turf that you can see in the tub just behind here. I've no idea if this is going to work or not. This is li literally me having a go. I thought I'd get it on the edges. It's kind of doing what I wanted it to do. It's just not very uh, thick as you'd imagine. Oh, there we go. I might have overcooked that. All I want is this end. There's a bit too much on that, so I'll just wipe that off. After all that, I find myself some. I'm just going to brush it in a downward stroke. Now that's probably quite a lot. But I wanted the uh, port cabin to have a sort of mouldy look about it. Particularly on this corner. The reason I put extra on this side is obviously there was another seam there. It just colours that in nicely. So as you can see there's an under undercoat adding the, uh, the weathered look I was going for. I say weathered, sort of mouldy mossy look I'm going for. Put that lid back on and all I'm going to do now is with the glue mixture I had earlier lightly dab a cotton bud in, get off as much excess as possible and dab this on. Just over it. Same on this side, and then well, this is where the experiment really happens. <laughs> it's either going to fail miserably or look all right. And just sprinkle a bit of fine turf on because I want the sort of abandoned port cabin look on the sides there. Tap it off. I think a bit of work, that'll probably look alright actually. I don't want to add too much to it just in case. But I will add a tiny bit more on the top there, on this underside. Throw it around, why don't I? And there we go. I think that looks quite good, actually. Again, as it's going in a sort of, uh, sort of um, a damp area on the layout, is what it's been modelled as. Um, these things, which would have been left pretty much abandoned, um, will have, in theory, been covered in this kind of stuff. So no, I'm going to leave that in and uh, add it to the layout and see how it looks. So now it's time to prepare these old bits of track. I want to keep the sleepers as best I can, so I'm going to try and uh, run them off the end of the uh, the rails where possible, um, just like this. Ooh. There you go, leaving a nice rail. And as you can tell, they're above my paint box, or my spray box. So what I'm going to be doing: spraying one side, letting it dry, and then spraying the other. Move you down slightly. As you can see, I'm on my loft floor. You normally would do this outside, but it's only going to be a light squirt. So here goes. This is literally just the rail match sleeper grime, which is 1406. just like that. 
We're done. So I'll give that about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I'll turn them over and do the other side. So you join me on my very crude painting table. Um, I've got the uh, safety railings from Scale Model Scenery. Um, they come as a pre-moulded kit. And all I'm going to do is take them out of the packet and in situ with some rail match warning yellow that I've got. I'm just going to, uh, well, paint them up, quite literally. And then I'll do the same with the speed restriction signs. Again, yellow for the tops, black for the bases. I only want a couple because I'll be uh, uh, quite literally chucking them in a hedge or something. And then while I'm in the mood for painting, I'll grab one or two sets of these wheels out and just with some sleeper grime, paint them up. Nice and easy. So let's get on with that. So here we are back at the retaining wall. I've since hoovered up all the excess of the initial um, fine turf. What I'm going to do now is just to add a bit of um, a bit of a difference, really, is spoon on some ballast. Um, again, I'm going to put a bit of glue down towards the uh, the wall on the inner arches, etc., and just spoon on a bit of ballast, just to give a diff a sort of uh, a different effect, different look. The more we can add to this, the better it'll look when it's all finished. Ultimately it's all an underlay for what will be bushes and things but um, I'm going to get on with that now. So now we let that ballast at the back dry. Um, I think the next port of call before we start adding in uh, some of the greenery is we need to get the workers from the end of the platform to the gate, which is actually on the end here. So no better way than getting some walkway. And I'm literally gonna cut this out, as you'd imagine, and just lay it on the end of the platform so we're going to come down here, next to the light, across, and then by the side of the trap. Nice and simple. And there we go, you can see the path is now in. As you can see on the front of that gate, I've put a uh, safety poster from the Porter Cabin kit. As you can see they go everywhere, and just answer the details. Now it's time to add the detail into this area, and hopefully we can make it look a bit more interesting. And there we go, that's the details added. I think it makes a nice start. I've put a bit of sea foam in the uh, area behind the porter cabin. Um, and what I might do is, because this looks a bit darker than the uh, the uh, side of the porter cabin, I might sprinkle a bit of uh, darker fine turf on top of that. 
but I'll see how it looks when it's dry. I've also added in front of the uh, crossing some stop signs as you can see and in front of the fence a bit of a bit of scatter as you can see there and I think that just starts to to lend itself to the scene. Uh, detail wise at the back you've got some of those speed signs I mentioned now uh, they're still a bit shiny because they're still a bit damp you've got the wheels in the background I'm not 100% happy with those there but um, they add a bit more scenic interest obviously the new junction van that's in there I will have to add once the uh, scatter's a bit drier I will probably scratch in a few more tie marks into the uh, the ground there and then coming round you've got a, a host of pallets which I need to sort out and then some uh, water bowsers next to the porter cabin. And then uh, take you from this angle. It's starting to look quite nice. As you can see from there, the scene's really starting to detail up nicely. So, I think I've got to a point now where uh, I need to let the glue dry before I can continue on. But uh, thanks as ever for watching. Hopefully it's been of interest to someone. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.